Hi students, we are going to talk about how to solve systems of equations by graphing. There are several ways we're going to focus on the graphing way. We are moving away from systems of linear inequalities. So we've already looked at systems of linear inequalities. A system of equations is not much different. It is still two or more equations. Okay, so in this class, we'll just be dealing with two, but when you get to Algebra 2, you'll look at systems of three, four, maybe five equations. The solution to a system, so if you're asked to solve, right, you're finding the solution, is where the graphs of the two equations intersect. And so this will be a point. Okay. So most systems of equations will intersect at a point, and you will have one solution. But sometimes you will have no solutions, or you might have infinitely many solutions. So we'll talk about what those scenarios might look like. Okay, so let's, let's uh, break this down. So we've got one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. I'm going to abbreviate that IMS. Okay, so here's what the three scenarios would look like. If we had one solution, our two lines are going to intersect at a point. And there's the one solution right there. If we have no solutions, what's going to happen, the two lines are actually going to be parallel, and they will never intersect. Therefore, there is no solution. There's no point that will make both equations true. And then infinitely many solutions is when the two lines that you graph actually end up being the exact same line. So they're right on top of each other. So all of their points they have in common. So that means there are infinitely many solutions. So these are the three cases. So let's try some examples. In order to solve a system by graphing, you're going to graph each equation. So if you look at these two equations, they're both in standard form, ax plus by equals c, which means I can't graph straight from this form. So we need to make these first look like slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b is what we want our equations to look like. Remember, once our equation looks like this, we can begin with b by graphing our y-intercept on the y-axis, and then we can move with the m, which is our slope, by using the rise and run. So let's go ahead and start there. So for the first one, remember how to turn these into slope-intercept form. You're going to first move your x term to the other side. So since that's a positive 2x, we'll subtract it from both sides. It'll go away. We're left with negative y equals. Now, whenever we subtract the x term from both sides, usually there will be a constant on the right side as well as our new x term, and they won't be like. So you'll always list the x term first and then followed by the constant. So it can start to look like mx plus b. The last thing you want to do is divide every term by the coefficient of y. In this case, it's a negative 1. So we're going to divide everything by a negative 1. So we get 1y equals, and then we're going to simplify these fractions, remember? So negative 2 over negative 1 is just 2x, and then 8 divided by negative 1 is negative 8. So here's our first equation. Okay, we'll graph it in a second. Let's go ahead and do the same with our second equation. We're going to solve for y. We'll move the x over by subtracting it from both sides. So y equals negative x plus 1. And our coefficient of y is 1, so we're done. So there are two equations in slope-intercept form. Now we're ready to graph. So let's go up to the first one. The b is negative 8. So on the y-axis, I'm going to go down to negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to put a point. And then from there, I'm going to use my rise and run of my slope. My slope is 2 over 1. That's positive, so it needs to move up from left to right. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, put another dot. Up 2 over 1, put another dot. 
and then I'll connect those with a straight line. All right, let's do it with the other one. So again, we're gonna begin with our B, which is one on the Y axis. I'll put a dot there. Our slope is negative one over one. So it's gonna go down from left to right. So I'm gonna go down one over one, put a dot. Down one over one, put a dot. And then I'll connect those with a straight line. And because these two lines intersect, they intersect right here, um, that is my solution. So my solution is 3, negative 2, because that's, that's the coordinate, or those are the coordinates of that point. So what this means is, if I take this x value and this y value, and I go up to my um, equations, I can do either the, um, either the standard form or the slope-intercept form. But if I replace the x's, here, let me do that real quick. If I replace the x with 3 and the y with negative 2 in both of my equations, it will make both equations true. And that's the only point that will make both equations true. Other than that, each equation's got tons of points that'll make it true, and then the other equation has tons of other points that'll make it true. But there's one point that will make them both true, and it's 3, negative 2. All right, what I'm going to do now is show you how you can do this in the calculator. So get your calculator, turn it on. And of course, you can't do this until your equations are in slope-intercept form. So that process you'll have to do by hand. Once they're both in y equals mx plus b form, you're going to um, add a new document. You'll add graphs. Then when the thing comes up, you will go ahead and type in the first equation, which was 2x minus 8. Remember, this f1 of x, that's your y. So you're just typing what's to the right of the equal sign. You'll press enter, and then there's your first line, which we graphed by hand, but you can use the calculator. Um, then you will press tab, and the second function will pop up, and you will type the second equation in right after the equal sign, negative x plus 1. Press enter again. And now you'll see your two lines. Now I can kind of see that they, they intersect at 3, 2, but maybe, or 3, negative 2, but maybe you're not quite sure. So you're going to type or press menu. This will come up. And then you're going to press 6 and then 4. 4 is intersection. Okay, what's going to happen is this dashed line will pop up. You can shift it left or right but you want to shift it to the left of where you think they intersect, anywhere to the left. So anywhere over in this area, you want to shift that line over and then click. That, it's asking you for the lower bound. So you want, you want to click to the left of your intersection point. And then you're going to move it again to the right side of your intersection point, anywhere on the right, anywhere over here, and then click it again. And what's going to happen, you can kind of see it's already highlighting where it thinks um, the intersection is. Once you click again, boom, it'll tell you the exact coordinates of that intersection point. So if you're having trouble determining what that is, menu 6, 4. Don't forget. You can try it again. So here's another example. I want you to pause the video and try this on your own. I want you to first uh, put both of these equations in slope-intercept form. Try to graph them by hand and figure out where they intersect. Um, or you can try to check it on your calculator. You can go straight to your calculator or you can do it by hand and then check it on your calculator. But try those steps we just did to see what you get. So pause now and then when you're done, unpause and you can check. See how you did. So here is the solution. This is what each equation looks like in slope-intercept form. You've got your B and M. Um, the first equation is this one. The second equation is this one. And you can see they intersect right there at 2, negative 2. Also check this in your calculator. Let me know if you have any questions on this one. All right, here's another one. If you want to pause it and put these equations in slope-intercept form, that's fine. 
otherwise we'll do it together. So we're going to start by subtracting x from both sides. Negative 3y equals negative x plus 6. Now we'll divide every term by that negative 3. So y equals, there's a 1 between the negative and the x. Negative 1 over negative 3 is the same as positive 1 over 3 x, and then 6 over negative 3 is the same as negative 2. So there's our first equation. Second equation, we'll do the same steps. We'll subtract x from both sides. Negative 3y equals negative x minus 3. Then we'll divide every single term by that negative 3. So we get y equals, there is a 1 between the negative and the x. Negative 1 over negative 3 is the same as positive 1 over 3, x. And then negative 3 over negative 3 is positive 1. So these are our two equations. Let's go ahead and graph them. On the first equation, our b is negative 2. So on the y-axis, we'll put a dot at negative 2. Our slope is positive 1 third. So we'll go up 1 over 3, put a dot up one over three, put a dot. I'm gonna go ahead and make my line. Okay, there's my line. Oh, and I never, there was my slope. Okay, second equation, our b, our y-intercept is positive one, so I'll put a dot there. And our slope is also one third, so I'll go up one over three, put a dot, up one over three, put another dot. Let me draw my line. And oh, check it out. Because our slopes are the same, it appears that our lines are parallel, which means they're not going to intersect, which means our lines have no points in common. So this is an example of no solution. So if you notice that your two lines have the same slope, you can immediately know there's no solution, and you don't have to graph it. Let's try another one. Okay, let's put these in slope-intercept form first. If you want to pause it and try it on your own, you can. For the first one, we'll move x to the other side by subtracting it from both sides, minus 2x. So we've got negative y equals negative 2x plus 1. Then we'll divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is negative 1. Every single term gets divided. So we've got y equals negative 2 over negative 1 is the same as positive 2 over 1 x, and 1 over negative 1 simplifies to negative 1. So here's my first equation in slope-intercept form. Let's do it with the second equation. We'll move our x term over again by subtracting it from both sides, so minus 6x. We're left with a negative 3y on the left equals, on the right, negative 6x plus 3. Now we'll divide every single term by the coefficient of y, which is negative 3. So y equals negative 6 over negative 3 simplifies to 2 over 1, x, and then 3 over negative 3 simplifies to negative 1. So there's our second equation. All right. I don't know if you guys notice, but your b's are the same and your m's are the same. When both of them are the same, when the lines themselves are exactly the same line, then they're going to overlap on each other, and this will be an example of infinitely many solutions. So let's go ahead and graph that line. For the first one, my y-intercept is negative 1. My slope is positive 2 over 1, so up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. We'll put our line. And then when we graph the second, equation, it's right on top of it. So they're both on top of here, which means every single point on both lines are the same, which means we have infinitely many solutions, or IMF. I'm sorry, IMS. <laughs> infinitely many solutions. Every single point on the line is true for both because they're the same line. All right, one more example. So sometimes you'll have those uh, example or those problems where 
they give you the two equations in the system and they'll have maybe like a bunch of points and they want to know which point is a solution. So what you'll do, you will take the x and the y from the point and you'll plug them into the x values and the y values of the two equations. And if it makes both equations true, then it is a solution, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So for the top equation, we're going to replace the x with 2 plus 2 times the y is 1 equals negative 4. And remember, you can just type this whole thing into your calculator and it'll tell you true or false, okay? Or you can simplify it by hand. I like to kind of do that. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. And negative 4 does equal negative 4. So that is true. It makes the first um, equation true. Okay, let's try it with the second equation. So our x is 2 plus our y, which is 1, equals 3. And yes, I know 2 plus 1 does equal 3. So that also is true. Of course, you could type that into your calculator. So remember, if it makes both equations true, then yes, it is part of the solution. So this point, 2, 1, is where the two lines intersect. Okay? Bring your questions to class. I'll see you soon.